Hello, welcome back to the VDC space. Uh, today we're gonna be modeling a ribbed slab. Now, in order for us to do this, we're gonna use a beam family template in order for us to generate a beam joist, and then we're gonna load it into our project, and then we're gonna place a concrete slab on top of those uh, beam joists. Now, before I get started, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe if you are new to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, hit that notification uh, button as I upload the Revit and beam modeling tutorials three times every week. I do different topics uh, based on different disciplines, architecture, structure, aviation, wastewater, roads and earthworks, and so on. Uh, so if you are already subscribed, uh, thank you. Uh, let's get to a thousand. I have a lot more content to give you guys. Now, without further ado, uh, let's jump into Revit. So here we are in Revit 23. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open a new uh, uh, project. You're going to drop down and use the structural template. Uh, let me just close these down. And then you're gonna go to level one. So after that, you're gonna go to file and then new for our beam joists, you're gonna go to family and then drop down. And then we're gonna use metric structural framing beams and braces. Open. And then you're gonna remove this extrusion that comes with the family template. And then you're gonna remove this reference line and then these extra reference planes and then go to the left uh, left elevation and now in order for us to do our beam joist we're gonna model our profile on the left elevation so go to create and then extrusion and then under work plane you're gonna say pick a plane drop down and then reference plane left okay so after that from the center line we're gonna draw a line uh, which is 65 millimeter to the left and then we're gonna bring it down by 125 millimeter and then you're gonna bring it this side and then you're gonna select all of them and then mirror pick axis and then pick this uh, metal uh, uh, reference plane and then it's copied to the other side and now the next thing is you're gonna place uh, two uh, vertical random random lines like so and then you're going to select one line and then drag this uh, uh, dimension line to the middle reference plane like so. And then you're going to adjust this and make this uh, 35 millimeters. And then you're going to do the same thing this side. And then you're going to make it the offset 35 millimeters. And then you're going to select these outer lines and then make them diagonal until it uh, uh, comes in contact with uh, this line. So you're going to drag it like this and then you're going to select these two lines and then remove them and then go to trim and extend and then trim and extend these two lines. Remove one line and then drag this to the other side. Same thing this side, remove one and then drag this so you can make it one line. Now we're going to make this family intelligent by adding parameters to this. So go to your dimension option and then hover over this corner until you see a blue dot and then select it. Do the same thing this side and then drag it upwards. Reduce your, reduce your scale and make it 1 is to 5 so you can see more clearly. And then you're going to make you're going to do the same thing on the bottom hover over here until you see a blue dot select it and then do the same thing this side and then drag it downwards and then you're going to select this line and then this line and then drag it to the right and then you're going to assign parameters to these three dimension lines so you're going to select this one go to create parameter and then you're going to name this top width okay and then you're going to Go to the bottom one, select it, and then create parameter, and then you're going to name it bottom width. Then OK, and then you're going to select this one, create parameter, and then you're going to name this height. And then OK. Now before going any further, go to your properties, and then family types. And then in order for you to effectively uh, 
control your family you have to lock your parameters you have created so you after creating your parameter make sure you check these boxes and lock your parameters so you're gonna lock all of them and then apply and then okay let me show you guys something when you go back to your properties family types and then you want to change perhaps your bottom width and make it uh, 80 millimeters and then apply only one side is uh, affected so in order for us to remedy that situation we have to add uh, additional dimensions line which we have to make equal so how do we do that we do the same thing we did with the bridge deck on our previous tutorial so let me take this back to uh, 70 millimeters apply okay so you're gonna go to di your dimensions object and then hover over here and then you're gonna select this and then select your middle reference plane and then select this again and then drag it downwards and after that when you uh, look closer you see you have this option to make this equal you're gonna select it and make it equal perfect now let's go back to your properties and family types and then change this to 80 again apply now both sides have taken effect both sides are affected because you made it equal so you're gonna take it back to 70 millimeters apply okay and then we're gonna do the same thing on the top uh, part of our beam joist you're gonna go to your dimensions object and then you're gonna hover over here and then select this and then your middle plane and then select this part again take it upwards and then make it equal then press escape and then everything it's set so you're gonna say finish the last step is you're gonna go to your floor plan reference plan in order for us to control the length of our beam joists we have to drag our extrusion to the right reference plane and then lock it and then drag it to the left reference plane and then lock it this is effective in terms of controlling the length of our beam after all we are using a beam family template so we're gonna load it into our project we are done it's an intelligent family so you're gonna say load into project i'm not gonna save this no and then it's loaded into our project now before we place our beam joists we have to place our columns make sure you are in level one so you're gonna go to structure and then go to column and then you're gonna drop down so i'm gonna select this uh, 300 by 450 and then i'm gonna uh, zoom in and just randomly place four of them like this and then i'm gonna say escape and then go to your 3d view i'm gonna select this and then adjust the constraints um, the top level i'm gonna set it to level two and then the base offset i'm gonna set them to zero and then just change the level of detail and then go to level two now for the beam joists the ones that are interacting with the columns have to be larger than the ones that will be running in the middle of our slab if that makes sense so we have to consider this a one-way slab so we're gonna place we're gonna go to beam our beam and then for our family we're gonna place them from center to center into our column like so and then go to your 3d view and as you can see they are clashing so remember uh our width uh, the breadth of our beam is 300 millimeters so we have to match that in terms of our beam joist so you're gonna control select the two of them and then go to edit type duplicate i'm gonna say okay the top uh, the bottom width i'm gonna make it 300 millimeter and then the top width i'm gonna make it uh, 600 millimeter and then the height i'm just gonna change it to 150 and then apply okay and then the the start level offset i'm gonna change it to the height of our beam joists so it's gonna be 150 same case for our end level offset i'm gonna make it 150 so that is perfect so i'm gonna go back to level two and then i'm gonna select one and then i'm just gonna change the length of this beam so that it 
becomes offset from these columns i'm gonna make it six thousand millimeters and then i'm gonna do the same thing this side six thousand millimeters perfect now the next thing we're gonna do is we, we're gonna have to add our beam uh, joist so in order for us to effectively place multiple beam joists we're gonna use a beam uh, system so under structure we're gonna go to beam system and then we're gonna select the rectangular option and then we're gonna place it from uh, these uh, these two corners of these larger beam joists and then after that we're gonna have to offset it so select one line and then offset it like so and make sure it's from the center of these columns or these beam joists and then make it a thousand millimeter same case this side you're gonna offset it like so and then adjust the offset to 1000 millimeter and now on the beam system these two lines indicate the direction of where your beams will be facing so in this instance they are going to be facing from west to east or east to west so it is perfect the next thing we're going to do is under our pattern we have to set our our uh, our arrangements of our beams so we have different options fixed distance fixed number maximum spacing clear spacing so i'm gonna use the fixed distance and then the distance between the the, the joist i'm gonna set it to 600 millimeters and then from center justification is fine and make sure the beam type is the one is the one uh, that you set up earlier is the family that we loaded into our project so that's perfect the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, set our offset of uh, our beam joists so they have to be on the same level as our larger beam joists so remember it is 150 millimeter offset from uh, level two so we're gonna set it to 150 millimeter and say okay and then go to your 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 3d view this is uh, what we have so the next thing we're gonna do is i don't i want the larger beam joist to take precedence on these beam joists not the other way around so i'm gonna select this beam joist and then under geometry i'm gonna say join and then select this beam joist and then select these smaller beam joist now the larger beam joist take takes precedence on the smaller beam joist if that makes sense so i'm gonna go to i'm gonna select this beam joist and then join and then select this beam joist again and then join them like so so you can do the same thing for all of them Okay, that's perfect and the last step is we're gonna have to add another uh, slab on top of these uh, beam joists so you're gonna go back to level two and then under level two we're gonna go to under structure you're gonna go to floor and then generic you're gonna go to edit type duplicate i'm gonna say okay and then under structure edit and then the thickness i'm gonna make it 200 millimeter and then the structure i'm gonna change it to concrete cast in place okay and then okay and then apply okay and then i'm gonna select the, rank, the rectangular option i'm just gonna randomly place it and then aligned or press al for short and then make sure it's aligned to these ends of these beam joists like so perfect now the next thing is you have to set the offset so you're gonna go to the south while you are at it go to the south elevation and then you have to measure from uh, level two you have to measure what's the offset so it's 150 and remember our slab is 200 so you have to add them up it's gonna be 
350 millimeter offset and say OK. Perfect. Now this is what we have. Oh, the, the one thing I forgot is to assign the material to our beam joist. So you're going to select it and then go back to Edit Family. And then you're going to select it. And then under Materials, you're going to select these three dots and then say Concrete. isn't concrete showing up now let's see concrete okay let's go properties family types structural material and then concrete hmm. seems like there's some missing parameters but you guys know the drill you can uh, assign your materials to these uh, families that you that you have created so that's just, I was just showing you the basis of how you can on how you can create a rip slab so I hope you guys uh, have learned something uh, thank you for watching make sure you like subscribe criticize if I did uh, mistake uh, mistakes uh, offer your your own your opinion remember beam is people policy and collaboration so i'll see you at the next tutorial and have a lovely day peace